Good afternoon, and welcome to Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Thanks for joining us today. Likeable Science is all about how science is likeable, what can I say? It's a dynamic, interesting process, a field of study, something we should all embrace and enjoy. And it's not something that is confined to the uh, uh, people in white coats in, in distant laboratories. Today, we are branching out a little bit from science, and we're actually going to sort of likeable math today. And I'm joined from North Carolina by Dr. Malkeet Singh. Welcome, Malkeet. Thank you, Ethan. It's nice to be uh, on the program. Well, glad to have you. And uh, as, as you may have seen, our, the title of this was Math is Fun. And Malkeet is one of these people who actually you know, did not hate math, did not run from math, did not uh, find math apparently uh, unpleasant, as so many people do. Uh, he, he learned math. And he's going to tell us today a little bit about about that experience. Maybe, maybe that's actually a good place to start, Malky, is, is how is it, what was your early experience with math that, that helped sort of shape your interest and in, in, uh, liking for math? Yes, um, when I was um, younger, I, I lived in Singapore. I grew up, uh, born and raised in Singapore. I also uh, taught math and science in Singapore and before coming to the States. And I find math uh, intriguing. It's uh, it's really elegant. It is uh, known as the queen of the sciences. So if we want to be really good scientists, we need to um, get a good grip on mathematical principles. And I find that uh, when kids, when we are teaching the kids, they need math to be concrete. And we want to show the beauty and the elegance of the mathematical principle. It's really yeah. exciting, and it's it's in nature, and it's all around us. Absolutely, it's it's, a, it's an important part of science and nature. And the, 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 as I <coughs> often talk about now, computational thinking is a, is a really important skill in becoming science literate. But I, I think you really hit on a, on a good one: is is if you can help kids really begin to appreciate math and like math, then you've you really made a, a huge stride. And helping them to do that by, by showing sort of the, the concrete nature, by helping them understand it, it relates to real things. It's not just some arbitrary scribblings of numbers on a page, right? It relates to real things and real processes. That's, uh, that's a key part of, of early uh, exposure to math, right? Yes, absolutely. I think if um, they have bad experiences uh, then they'd get turned off from mathematics doing math is hard and it's boring it's not exciting but if they had a good experience uh, that builds up their confidence and at the same time uh, they will start liking math because their experiences are good and they will explore studying um, math so, so I think initial experiences are really important. We do not want to put them off. And everybody can do math. And making math concrete is um, one of the ways to engage students. For example, when teaching fractions, you can bring in things like uh, ribbon and um, like a lot of... Um, it might find it difficult when we are dividing fractions. And fractions is a crucial topic in the early grades, especially once they um, master the fundamentals of uh, whole numbers, and then they move on to fractions. And that's a topic that stumbles a lot of uh, students because uh, maybe the examples given to them may not be too engaging. So for example, you can bring concrete stuff like ribbons. So if we look at a ribbon and we say, what is one divided by half? And that's a division problem. So we can take the ribbon, for example, in this case, if we cut the ribbon into halves, how many pieces uh, do we have? So we can ask students to cut kids to cut the ribbon into two half pieces so 
they they will have to and then we can also get it to another uh, fraction which is one quarter mm -hmm. so we can ask okay what if you if you divide this into one quarter how many one quarter pieces do we have and then they can work with the ribbon and they get four and then you can move on to eight and so it becomes concrete uh, understanding rather than just saying that whenever you divide by a fraction you um, take the reciprocal and multiply so that's just like a, a heuristic method where they you, you just follow a principle rather than here they are holding the, right. the the object and making sense of the math and it makes sense to them when they can actually see it they can feel right. it and they understand why it always works right i, I was so struck as as an adult I, I didn't run into these until i was an adult little so-called math cubes or arithmetic cubes just sets of identical cubes that you can begin to to look at and learn about multiplication when you put, you know, you make a little grid of four cubes and then you make four lines of four cubes and suddenly you see that four times four is 16 and you begin to understand the principle of squaring something, right? Uh, and that, that sort of concrete thing when I saw it was just like, wow, this, this suddenly makes clear, so clear what, you know, that to any kid and then you can look at three dimensions and begin to think four times four times four, right? If you built this up, you begin to really understand that the power of uh, using a concrete object or concrete objects to, to teach kids math. I had never, that, that was not part of my original math training at all, and, and maybe why I'm not, not particularly fond of, of math at all. Yeah, I mean, uh, multiplication is directly related to finding area of, for example, rectangles, where they, you can give a one cube, uh, one centimeter by one centimeter cube, or one inch by one inch cube, and you, let's say you, you give 24, uh, cubes and they can put six on the length side and four and they fill up the whole rectangle and that you can say okay well why don't you come up with a, a theory on why uh, when you put them length by width and you fill up the whole rectangle you get 24 so they can figure out oh you are uh, multiplication six times four is 24 cubes Right. So you let them explore, and so they can relate multiplication to finding areas of rectangles, and then um, they get they can see it that it works. It 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 is a, a a concrete to them. Math is existing. It is right in front of them. Exactly, exactly, and they understand then the equivalence of six times four and four times six because they can look at that rectangle yeah. and say there are four rows of six or there are six rows of four depending upon how they look at it. But it's all the same, Absolutely. right? Yeah, so when, when you get the students to explore, they will and get them to discuss and mm -hmm. like as exactly like what you said, some will see it six times four, some will see it as four times six, but then they come to the same conclusion uh, and you can guide them along and that is more fun than just right. teaching them right. memorize the six times four six seven times four and so right. and so forth. and then they can see those same 24 cubes can be done in, in three rows of eight or eight rows of three right and, and it's the same 24 Absolutely. you know it's a whole yes yeah. you know, suddenly they begin to get that notion of equivalence in, in a very very real very authentic way uh, yeah, no, very powerful, and I, I, I so much wish in retrospect that I had been taught that way originally, because, because of course, how we learn math early on really shapes, I think, how we think about it later. I suspect you had very good yeah. teachers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. I, uh, I think teaching teachers make a great impact on students' uh, interests, and at the same time, giving them the confidence that they can do m well in math and they shall explore uh doing uh, higher level math and if they get discouraged in the earlier grades then it's hard to uh move on to upper grades and and suddenly just get an epiphany and say oh today i get up and i love math yeah. so no. it builds from foundations yeah
Yeah, and Singapore, of course, is renowned for having a very good education system. Uh, teachers are well-trained, professional. Uh, they, they generally do a really super good job, and, and really they, they obviously work for you. So, uh, whereas I, I had a, my early grade teachers were not necessarily, I think, of the highest caliber, and, and particularly in things like math. Uh, so I'm just lucky my folks supported my interest in science, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think uh, it's we have to make maybe teaching math a bit more consistent, and and I think so that and get teachers to work together and look at strategies. Now we have a lot of resources, like uh, they have uh, video clip clips on teaching math fractions, for example. Uh, teaching yeah. rational numbers and things like that, where the teachers can get ideas and they can work together and collaborate and make make teaching uh, more fun in, in rather than just individually uh, coming up with a plan. Because sometimes yeah. when you collaborate, you exchange ideas and you you can you you can share ideas and. And learn from each other and come up with a better lesson plan, perhaps. Exactly, exactly. And some of those have been gathered into a, together into a, a resource that we have a picture of. I think uh, this is from yes. a, a group called the What's Work What Works Clearinghouse, and so they have this mm -hmm. this booklet on developing effective uh, thinking about about fractions. There, so and we have a URL at the bottom. If if viewers want to go to get that, they can get it from the Institute for Educational Services (IES). There, you can find that by Googling it on the web and, and look at their resources and you can find this. Um, so you, you've you used this particular resource? Yes, I, I have used this resource. And what the resource does is it, it gathers all the evidence from the research findings and they look at different practices and they rate those um, practices according to the available evidence. So some of the practices have very strong evidence. Some of them may have moderate evidence, depending on how many research studies have found uh, an impact to improve student performance. And um, some of the the principles that uh, that I think worked for me are actually uh, the same that is being shown in that practice guide. So. Uh, from my own personal experience, I, I think the, those are strong evidence or moderate evidence, depending on how much research is available. Right. But uh, teachers can use those uh, as a guide. Yeah, and, and the, you know, different teachers, of course, have different styles and different approaches, but there is overall, uh, there are approaches that are known to be and shown to be and now demonstrated and, and proven to be better and more effective than other approaches. And uh, it's good for teachers to be able to know this and know that you know, these, here are some tried and true approaches, here are some basic things I really ought to be doing when I'm teaching math. And then there are other things that you know, I, I could try it if I want, but you know, it may be less effective. So it's, it's valuable <laughs> for teachers to have that kind of resource. Yes. Because now they, are, they, they don't need to search for what works or what doesn't work. Uh, they have a resource that um, the What Works Clearing House, which is a uh, body of the Institute of Educational Sciences, um, and they've done all the hard work to put it together so that uh, the teachers don't have to hunt for what works, what doesn't work. They can uh, have the evidence at their fingertips, uh, basically knowing what research is uh, available out there so they don't they, they just have a resource uh, and they can adapt that and they know that, okay, this practice works. Right. Then they can uh, use that and develop their lesson plans or they can discuss and make it uh, more exciting, but at least they are, they are in the ballpark. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's, that's great. It's great. Great guide to have and a great group. Uh, this, this Institute for Educational Services has done really remarkable work. We're going to explore more about math and why math is fun. Uh, but first, we're going to take a one-minute break here.
My guest, Malkit Singh, uh, will be back with me, Ethan Allen, your host here on, on Likeable Science on Think Hawaii. We'll be back in one minute. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. And you're back here on Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii with me, your host, Ethan Allen, and uh, with our guest today, Dr. Malkeet Singh from North Carolina. Thanks again for being here, Malkeet. And nice. we're, we are, uh, we've been exploring why math is interesting, why math is fun, looking at some of the keys to really helping engage young learners in math. And uh, we were talking uh, for a bit there about the, the concrete nature of it, helping kids understand by using real, tangible objects, ribbons or uh, little cubes, uh, things, objects they can see, they can feel, they can manipulate, and they can then get a real sense of what this math really means. And but I, I think you wanted to delve a little more deeply into a little bit higher levels. You had, you had talked in your, our earlier yes. correspondence about something called the distributive property of math? Yes, yes. So uh, I think the second important thing that we have to uh, consider is making sure that the math that we are teaching, we make strong connections to the mathematical principles. For example, uh, when a student asks, why is a negative number multiplied by a negative number is positive? Typically, we may, uh, teachers may give a response like, well, that's, that's a rule. It's always uh, positive. Negative number multiplied by negative is positive. But uh, actually, it is you can prove why negative number multiplied by a negative will always be a positive number. So, uh, what principle can we use? We use uh, what properties? Distributive property. Uh, it we can build on the foundational principle so that they appreciate that the distributive property can be used to prove why a negative number multiplied by a negative number will always be positive for. A, Example, if you look at this, we know that multiplying the number by zero is zero. So multiplying the number by one gets the same number. For example, if two multiply by one, uh, we get two. And negative two multiplied by one is equals to negative two. So for example, if we have um, a distributive proper property, so in this case, if we have a uh, negative here, negative 1 multiplied by uh, 1, we get a negative 1, and then we can multiply negative 1 mul by a negative 1. So to get um, a 0, we, we negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 has to be 1. So it is a... so the students, we get the students to explore using the distributive property. What can it be? Negative one multiplied by negative one has to be one to make the right side equals to zero. So once we know that negative one multiplied negative one is always one, we can uh, expand and ask the students to explore. What do you think negative two multiplied negative one will be? Will it be negative two or positive two? and negative 2 multiply negative 2 and so as they develop it inductively they will understand that oh yeah the distributive property shows that uh, it works a negative number multiply a negative number 
will always be a positive number. So from all this inductive reasoning, then they will do. Then you have a deductive uh, principle that a negative number multiply a negative number will always be positive. Right, right, and, and that's if you can teach math. Where, yes, as you say, you, you develop that from some foundational principles, and it's not just a matter of learning arbitrary rules. Uh, it's much more real, it stays in our heads much more, we can actually use it and apply it much more effectively, and they will become you know, more, more uh, computationally literate, as the, the current phrasing is. And it's, it's a, yeah. a very, very valuable uh, skill to, for kids to learn, and, and something that, that's Again, I think often not taught in the, in the way it should be, but uh, because many of the teachers, elementary teachers themselves, were not taught in sort of this good way, in using concrete examples, drawing uh, things out of fundamental principles, and, and using those processes of, of induction and deduction as you just so nicely described, right? Yes. And so, for example, if you look at uh, negative two multiplied by negative two, uh, you, you you can see that now if the students know that negative one multiply negative one uh, is always one, and then they can develop the bill on that foundation and say, okay, let's use deductive, uh, let's use distributive property to see, to show why negative two multiply negative two will be positive four. Mm -hmm. So they can use their distributive property and then expand it accordingly because they have already proven negative one multiplied by negative one will always be one. And so when you add one plus one plus one plus one, that will be four. So negative two multiply negative two will always be four. So uh, they can build on then. So you're drawing the principles out of distributive property and then explaining and making uh, negative multiplications more uh, fun. Math is fun. <laughs> it's exciting. So it makes math elegant rather than if the teacher says, well, that's a rule. Right. Exactly. And, so, and, I mean, the one, at least the nice thing about mathematical rules is they are consistent. It was something that always bothered me in uh, learning languages was the, the fact that the rules, there are exceptions to all the rules. Uh, math is very elegant in that sense that its rules are, are hard and fast, but it's, it's far better, you say, to teach the kids not the rules or let them deduce the rules themselves and see how the rules come out of the underlying properties of numbers, basically, right? Yes, and you are developing scientific skills as well, scientific thinking, because you're using inductive reasoning, you're, you then and then you come up with, the, and then they can, based on the inductive reasoning, they have developed a principle, and the principle, and learned the principle, and now they know how to apply that principle to all their other mathematical uh, questions and problems that they, when they deal with negative numbers, uh, multiplication of negative numbers, so they, they can use deductive reasoning from that then that point onward. So you, it's, a, it's a good scientific thinking pra uh, tool as well. So the teachers, when they teach in this manner, uh, not only they are answering the students why, the curiosity that the students discover for themselves the beauty of math and the elegance, and also they develop the scientific thinking that will help them when. Um, they do science and uh, do STEM subjects, not right. science, technology, math. Yes, uh, it works. Right, right. Because yeah. math is clearly very important in, in areas like engineering and, and uh, the, the process of uh, producing uh, good concrete results out of a, 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 a engineering challenge. You, you really have to understand the math. You have to understand and be able to apply it well. So it's really critical. So, yeah. um, and, and go ahead, one please. thing I would point out is if, they are, if the, you develop the interest, uh, if the students develop the interest for math and 
and at the upper level like calculus and higher math it comes with effort uh, they need to put in a lot of effort because um, the math problems are a bit more complex but then they can persevere because that interest will drive them to find and learn uh, more interesting mathematical principles uh, and think to uh, things that they can actually uh, use and develop. Right, right. And that's, again, you you hit on a key point that in order to uh, build the understanding, you have to have that engagement, that interest. And that, in part, is, is based on that early learning and, and having early successes, right? Being able to realize, hey, I, I figured that out. Uh, why, you know, two times two is four, why negative two times negative two is also four. And, you know, when they develop that confidence and that interest, then together, right, th those two properties lead them to be confident about further explorations, both build their curiosity and, and their uh, self-efficacy, as it were. So they'll, they'll per, per, uh, persist and push ahead and, and learn more and more of the critical math they can then apply in other, in other areas. Absolutely, yes. That's, That's uh, that leads to the third important thing that I I wanted to share is that uh, math with perseverance, effort, uh, all students can do well in math. It's not an innate ability. That means some can do math and some right. uh, just one not being able to do math, but it's those early experiences that shapes much of their uh, desire to do math and uh, do engineering and uh, to persevere and, and do really well in that subject matter. So, it, it, exactly. So there is increasing a recognition that, that math ability and indeed abilities in general are much more plastic than we used to think can be developed by good teaching, encouragement, uh, and, and pushing ahead and rather than just saying, oh, this is something I can't do or I don't do well. Hey, I want to thank you so much for being with me today, Malkit. It's been a, a real pleasure. We're, we're coming up on the end of our time, however. But uh, Malkit Singh uh, from North Carolina has been here help, helping us learn that, that math is fun. Thank you so much, Malkit. And I hope you thank will you. I hope you will come back uh, next week and, and see more likable science here on ThinkTech Hawaii. Until then.